Like most people now, I use my phone for pretty much everything, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The issue arises when my phone suddenly isn't there anymore, like when it dies. This issue is becoming more and more of a problem as my phone ages, and the battery can't hold the charge for as long. There are tons of solutions to this problem though, the most popular being a power bank. But most of the time I don't have one of these with me, and they're really big and clunky. So, I want to make a little emergency phone charger that works with a very common disposable battery that you can buy from most shops. To do this, we're going to need this awesome little circuit called the buck converter. This circuit takes a large voltage on its input and lets you slim it down to a smaller voltage of your choice on the output. Now, you may be thinking, but this is what a resistor does. And you would be right. But, the buck converter does it in a very different way. You see, resistors lower voltage by converting the unwanted power into heat. This is why resistors get hot. But this creation of heat just wastes the energy. Now, the buck converter uses an inductor, which barely heats up, making it much more efficient. And it's super small, which is great. So to make this emergency charger, we're going to need the buck converter, a dead 9 volt battery, a fully charged 9 volt battery, an old micro USB cable, a 9 volt battery clip, and some protoplastic which is this really cool plastic that's moldable when it's hot, but it's solid when cold. We're going to use it to make our case. We need to start by adjusting the buck converter to output 5 volts for our phone. We do this by connecting 9 volts to the input terminals of the buck converter. Positive goes to positive and negative goes to negative. I'm supplying 9 volts through my power supply, but you can just use a 9 volt battery if you don't have one. Now we're going to connect a multimeter to the output of the buck converter. Again, negative to negative and positive to positive. And lastly, we're going to turn the little potentiometer until we get a reading of 5 volts on the multimeter. Once you've got that, we can disconnect everything. Now we need to take apart that old 9 volt battery because we want the connector on top. It's pretty easy to get off. All we need to do is carefully peel back the metal around it and pull out the inner cells and then cut all the wires, going to the top connector. What's really interesting about this battery is it's an alkaline battery, which is the same as those 1.5 AA batteries. Now if we look at the innards of this 9V battery, we see that there are actually 6 1.5V cells in series that produce 9V. Anyway, now we need to connect the buck converter to the other 9V battery clip. We do this by soldering the red wire to the positive inputs and the black wire to the negative inputs. The input pins are labeled in plus and in negative. We then glue the buck converter to the bottom of the 9 volt battery connector we got from that old 9 volt. Now we need to crack open our micro USB cable and get the connector out. You should see a black and red wire. You might also see a green and white wire if you do cut them completely off. Then we're going to cut our black and red wire down to about 2 centimeters. Then the micro USB connector can be glued under the 9 volt connector and then the micro USB cables can be connected to the buck converter. The red wire is connected to the positive output on the buck converter and the black wire is connected to the negative output on the buck converter. Now we need to make sure everything works, so grab a device that charges off 5 volts and plug it in. I use an old power bank I didn't care about just in case I messed something up while making this. Once we're sure everything works perfectly, we add hot glue around all the connections and make sure everything is connected solidly. Hot glue isn't the strongest casing, so to make sure the thing is rugged, I use this. This is protoplastic. You put it in hot water and it becomes moldable, and then when it cools down, it becomes rock hard. Links where you can pick up all the stuff you need will be in the video description. To make the case, I poured a small amount of protoplastic beads into some hot water and carefully molded it around the emergency charger into some kind of half egg shape. Once it's dry, you'll see it goes opaque. After mine had hardened, I found that the shape was very uneven and felt kind of rough. So to fix this, we're going to take a hairdryer and blow some hot air onto it for about 2 minutes. This smoothed it out really nicely and gave it a great feel. Now the last thing to do is test it. Once you're sure it works, you're done. Now if you're ever stuck somewhere with a dead phone, all you need to do is pull this off your keychain and find a 9 volt. Lots of electronics operate on 9 volt batteries. So if you're bored in someone's house without a phone, all you need to do is dig through a couple of electronic devices until you eventually find a 9 volt. Just make sure you get permission first. This is also pretty useful if you're far from your charger and need your phone for something. You can just go to the shop and buy a 9 volt. Obviously it's not ideal because 9 volts aren't the cheapest battery, but it's useful for an emergency. It's also useful to leave a 9 volt in your car or backpack because they're really small and light and they might come in handy one day. Full written instructions with links to where you can get these parts can be found in the video description. Thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed it check out my other videos or subscribe.